everyone's fan on. I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Tom Vecchio of FanDuel, who's turned the page on week one and is looking forward to making this DFS lineup for week number two. What's going on, Tom? I'm doing good. You know, week one, obviously, very exciting. But, you know, we pushed forward in the NFL season, whole set of matchups break down. Week one was exciting yeah, for some of us. For others, it was a bit of a letdown. Typical fantasy Sunday for us losers. All right, let's get to DFS week two because that's how we're going to win some money. So let's begin at the quarterback spot. This is who you're building around uh, with your DFS lineup for this weekend. So let's start with Dak Prescott. His price is $8,300 this week on FanDuel. Dak was many people's MVP picks here this season, and you like him and this matchup here in week two. Yeah, you know, starting off week one, we'll just call it what it was. Very modest game for him, you know, 270 some odd yards, only one touchdown. But more importantly, you know, he threw it 39 times, which is what we kind of want to be looking at. And you know, that was a one score game against the Rams throughout its entirety, always within one score. Now, this week, going up against the Atlanta Falcons, a team, you know, I was big on attacking last week via Russell Wilson. And we want to do the same thing for Dak Prescott this week. Uh, 28.5 implied team total for the Cowboys. They're at home. It's a six and a half spread. So again, within one score and looking to pair him with CD lamb or Michael Gallup, both very affordable, I think is what we want to be focusing on for Dak. And listen, if the 270 some yards and one touchdown is his baseline, this Atlanta Falcons secondary should allow him to access the ceiling, hopefully 300 yards and two or three touchdowns. Dak Prescott paired up with Michael Gallup and Amari Cooper. A CD Lamb is a good way to start your teams here for this weekend. Uh, hopefully the matchup is fun. And if that baseline is what we saw in a close game against the Rams this past weekend, we're in store for a big year, hopefully, from Dak Prescott. Moving over to the wide receiver position, we get to DeAndre Hopkins, where too many fantasy analysts counted him out. They looked at his target share. They said he's not the same guy he once was. In week one, he seemed pretty good to me, Tom. In week two, that connection with Kyler Murray is going to be on display once again against the Washington football team. He's priced also at $8,300. Hopkins with Arizona and Kyler Murray seems like a good fit. Absolutely. And speaking of his target share, in week one, it was up at 43% for the Cardinals. Now, I don't expect it to be above 40% every week, you know. It'll eventually fall somewhere around 30, 35%, but 16 targets, 14 receptions, 151 yards, no touchdowns for him. And he still had an amazing fantasy day. So looking to him, looking to Kyler, you know, attacking this Washington secondary is something, you know, they didn't look too bad uh, in the first week against Philadelphia, but there was really no DeAndre Hopkins on that Eagles receiving core. So I'm going to be looking to Kyler, to DeAndre Hopkins for a 35 uh, you know, plus percent target share uh, for the Cardinals offense week in and week out until their salaries become out of reach. Let's have fun with that Cardinals football team with DeAndre Hopkins, how fast they play. That target share, like you said, I don't think it's going to be there each and every week, but it was damn good in week one. Taking advantage of Washington and their secondary will be a priority for us. Pairing Dak with a Cowboys wide receiver and DeAndre Hopkins, well, that sounds like a winning formula. Finally, we'll get to the tight end that you're targeting here this week, building your team around Mark Andrews, which seems like a safe bet. He's priced at $7,500, caught a couple of TDs this past Sunday, and Andrews still remains Lamar Jackson's favorite red zone target. Absolutely. You know, the two touchdowns was nice. Uh, you know, the red zone usage he had last season, this season at least the start is good. But more importantly, he played on 71% of the snaps in week one. And dating back to last year, he only played on 57% of the snaps at his peak. You know, this is per John Daigle on Twitter. Uh, really good stuff there. So we have a new usage for or somewhat new usage for Mark Andrews. And although he's somewhat touchdown dependent, I'm banking on the you know snap share rising, which allow him to his overall volume to rise and not needing to be so touchdown dependent. So with a 52 and a half over under in this game, a 29.5 implied team total for the Ravens, I'm looking back to Lamar and Mark Andrews as I am a lot of weeks, and hopefully this you know target share and snap count continues to rise for Andrews. Andrews is such a major part of this high profile Ravens offense it's they're constantly just moving and Andrews is a major part of that you know you can count on him for those touchdowns and to be a major factor for Lamar Jackson wherever they are on the field for Mark Ingram owners well it was a rough day for you but in season long DFS it doesn't matter Mark Andrews is someone you can count on there you have it that's going to do it for us those are who we are building our lineups around here in week two when I talk to you again on Thursday we'll find the value plays that you're going to pair up with these guys to make the lineups work. Tom Becchio, we appreciate the time. Good luck. Same to you.
Tomorrow, I'll be joined by Megan Nunez here on the FanDuel Herd. We're just taking a look at her best bets for week two of the NFL. And then on Thursday, Tal will be back as we take a look at the values that we're building around to make this whole lineup work with all these studs we talked about today. So for Tom Vecchio, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.